as far as immediate neighborhood as far as extended neighborhood is concerned india's policies are benign but chinese policies transactional with commercial interests imperialistic credit policy many countries are suffering whether it is sri lanka whether it is pakistan of course the things have not come to seriousness in pakistan but sri lanka because of china one of the reasons for sri lanka's economic crisis is china and bangladesh it is feeling the pinch so if you look at india and china in their approaches to the immediate neighborhood outreach extended neighborhood outreach there is contrasting picture let us look at the question in their outreach to the immediate and extended neighborhood india's benign approach differs from that of china's transactional mechanisms elaborate with examples you have to elaborate india's benign approach as far as its outreach to the neighborhood is concerned china's transactional approach is also to be explained right how to make a beginning indian outreach that revolves around the two principles that is bringing the countries out of the problems as much as possible india supported around 3 to 4 billion dollars when sri lanka is into crisis whenever any country is into crisis india is sending the air force vehicles ships and many more to take out the persons in distress at the same time it is helping lot of ships from piracy it is helping various countries in case of severe cyclones it is saving thousands of lives it is helping countries with coast guard vehicles with the ships at the same time with satellite services so india's approach is benign approach china also may be doing such type of things but china's approach predominantly is imperialistic credit policy how let us look at this question so how to make a good beginning the chinese approach here you see india's approach is based on two principles help the country as much as possible to bring it out of problems how india helped sri lanka in recent times and at the same time don't expect any commercial return of course india may want some strategic benefits but not commercial benefits but china wants commercial benefits to that country not only to that country to the firms working from china there is lot of difference and chinese approach is normally called transactional approach some say the chinese policies are imperialistic creditor policies what is india's approach humanitarian assistance and disaster relief in fact india conducts regular hadr exercises in the indian ocean region it helps many countries in crisis in case of cyclones in times of water crisis india sent water to maldives announcing credit lines to smaller countries without much conditions softer terms if india is uh, undertaking the projects in any country no exploitation by indian companies and india's project assistance is on softer terms some grants some loans with softer interest rates no country complained that indian companies are exploiting concentrating on historical ties people to people contacts and assistance in the form of coast guard vehicles satellite services and many more this is how india helps in a benign way knowing very well that for several years sri lanka tilted towards china india helped a lot when sri lanka is into economic crisis how china is helping the neighborhood china invested heavily in pakistan and some of the projects may not be economically viable and there is difference of opinion in the political class with regard to 
viability of the Chinese projects. And another classic example is China made huge investments in Sri Lanka. It created white elephants, Hambantota port, Matala Rajapaksa International Airport. It was built with Chinese assistance but no traffic. And the returns are zero. Almost that airport is closed. It is used for some other purpose. Same thing in several African countries. It built infrastructure which became white elephants. And most of these projects are done by Chinese companies. Chinese companies are involved with Chinese assistance. And part of the economic crisis of Sri Lanka was contributed by Chinese projects which are white elephants like Matala Rajapaksa Airport, Hamandota Port. When Sri Lanka was not in a position to pay back dues pertaining to Hamandota Port, Hamandota Port was taken on lease for 99 years by China. And when you look at infrastructure projects in Bangladesh, as part of BRI, 35 major infrastructure projects were completed. But you see, now Bangladesh owes around 4 billion dollars or 6% of the foreign debt for BRI projects. In fact, now Bangladesh is re-looking at assistance or re-looking at engagement with the China. So you see the difference. No such thing happened with India. Of course, India's assistance or project assistance may be less in comparison to China, but China's has transactional approach, commercial interests. Chinese companies are benefited, white elephants are created. This is the major difference. After attending the inauguration of new government, within 15 days, head of the Bangladesh government visited India two times in 15 days and the head of the Bangladesh government became the first foreign leader to visit India, right? So this is the difference as far as the approach of India and the China is concerned with regard to outreach to the neighborhood and immediate neighborhood. Have a nice day. Thank you.